The following interview was conducted with Katie McMillan, Purdue class of 1950, for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, July 26, 2010, at a residence in West Lafayette. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. Tell us where and when you were born and your parents in early years. I, my name is Katie Dietrich. And uh, as Katie Dietrich, I was born in Indianapolis in 1928. And my parents were um, Wilbur, Bill Dietrich, and my mother was Mary Frances Bradshaw. And my father and mother met at Purdue. And uh, my dad graduated in 1925 from Purdue and went got a job at Inland Steel Company and stayed 42 years. People don't do that anymore, do they? They move from job to job. At any rate, um, they had five children. I'm the eldest of five children. And um, of our family from that five, we probably have 25 Purdue grads. So we're, we're, kind of, we're kind of loyal. <laughs> of my own, I have three children, and two of them graduated from Purdue and one from Butler. He was a happy man this year with the Butler and the basketball. At any rate, um, I attended Griffith High School. We lived in Highland, Indiana, the region, the Calumet region, and we're very proud of being from the region. At any rate, um, I uh, then went to went to Purdue. My father, who was a let's talk a little about high school. Where'd you go to high school? Any I activities? went to I went to Griffith High School. Okay, and I there were about a hundred and ten in my graduating class, and of those, no women went to college, and there were three or four who went to Purdue, but men who went to Purdue. So I think in its own way, I was a, a misfit. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if I was a misfit or not, but at any rate, when I applied to go to Purdue, um, I received a letter from uh, Mrs. Beauvais, and this was the liberal science school, who were admitting 40 women each year to be the forerunners of the liberal arts school at Purdue. So in other words, liberal science, and this is how they had 40 women, and we had classes. Instead of having mathematics, we had theory of mathematics and, and that sort of thing. The classes were wonderful. Um, in, well, I, I don't want to go into all that. Where did uh, tell us about resident? Tell us about campus life when you were here. And did well, you, did you it, make a visit before you enrolled? Had you been to the campus? I, I had been to the campus. Uh, well, I had to be interviewed. Let's see. I came to Purdue another time because I was in a Latin contest, state Latin contest. I didn't do too well, but I had a wonderful time there. I. I remember being in the um, the Union Building, and some really nice young man spoke to me. Oh, oh, it was so exciting! At any rate, when I arrived in 1946, there were there were, there were so many returning vets, GIs, and all coming to Purdue that there wasn't enough room in the residence halls. There weren't enough, so we were in Cary Hall East. So the eastern end across from the, from the field house was where we were. And that was wonderful because there were all these men and, 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 the, girl. and the girls were all... A little click. There, it was fun. Uh, did you have, where was your room, did you have a roommate? Oh, I had a roommate. Uh -huh. And um, I wrote letters to my mother and father, mother and daddy, by the way, and uh, told him all about that. And she was fine, she was okay, but I found other women that were more fun for me. So at any rate, we had a good time sure. in Cary East. Um, and you were close to Ross Aid. 
Yes, we were close to Ross A, but it was the field house that was the fun because of the basketball and all of that. At any rate, my classes were excellent. The, um, the interesting thing was that we had to register in the um, memorial gym. And uh, so we went to the gym to, to, and you had to fill out cards to figure out if you, what class you were going to be in. And while you were there, I was, I was, you know, they'd ask you so many things to do. And then next place it said, um, this way to, the, to have your footprint taken. So your footprint, your footprint, and so you'd been a answering so many dumb things that you said, okay, you know. So you took off your shoe and you put your thing, and then the the one man said to me, uh, "Well, that's fine. Oh, I wish I could. Can can I right, look sure. up? Yeah. You. When you went to registration, you had your picture taken." and had your name and school put on a little blackboard and it was on the the picture it, it was in the picture these are for your passports they had been there had been so many things where you were supposed to do dumb things that Anyhow, so many things, dumb things that, like this footprint business, I saw someone copying something on a long piece of paper. When one of the boys asked me if I had my elevator tickets, and another asked if I wanted an autographed picture of Orville Wright, I stopped right then and was very embarrassed. I still started laughing. I took the board and my schedule card from the first boy. As I took my card, I saw him put the piece of paper he'd written my name on, et cetera, et cetera, on his, in his pocket. He said, that's all. The telephone numbers are for future reference. <laughs> that was registration, huh? That was registration. Okay, okay. And she shows a picture. Oh, wow. Anyhow, did you have much option? And uh, you said they were pr the program was pretty structured. Or did you have any option on course selection? Uh, just a little. Okay. I mean, uh, I had was in honors English, which was fun because I had Professor McKee, who was a marvelous professor, and um, so that was part of the fun. Sure. And if you were, I was interested in history and English, and so. I had to do physics. If I had to do physics, then I, and I would least like to do gym, and you know how that is. Sure, I understand. What about uh, student organizations? Any clubs? Did you join any? Oh any? yes, I I was I was in um, the I was in the Glee Club, and it, not the Glee Club, in the University Choir. I, that was a big deal because we were freshmen. They only took 500, but we thought we were lucky to be in the 500. Sure. And and it was Al Stewart who was in charge of it, and he could make anybody sing, you know. <laughs> At any rate, I liked um, uh, Play Shop, and so I was in Play Shop. And as I went through school, I was in the student union and that sort of thing. I still keep hearing from all of those people nowadays. How many were about? How many were in your class? About a couple of hundred. Oh, 
in in, in the in, in the, uh, when you entered the school wasn't that that large then would it been? no but um, I have all that that's okay we don't it was a pretty good sized class so and did did you have any um, veterans people coming back from the war that were in any of your classes oh yes and oh, that okay. was made a whole big difference too that's what I've, others have shared because right. they had. They were playing a little bit of catch up because they'd started school, then they were in the service, and now they're that, trying to finish right. and move on. That's right. Um, the tuition at the time was um, sixty dollars for the semester, and that's something. It certainly is. At any rate, I do know how many because it was interesting the vets, how many vets there were. Okay. At least that's what I. That's right. There are 2,800 freshmen and new people to campus, and 530 of those are women out of 2,800. They said that 55% of the class are vets. We got our freshman Bibles, you know, our things we need to look at. Sure. Anyhow, we took our orientation classes and all, all that right, sort okay. of thing. What did you do during the summers? Did you go home for the summer? Or did you oh, work? yes. Oh, okay. no, I went home and my father said that he didn't think we needed, I needed to have a job. I would have plenty of work. You need to help your mother, you know. Sure. So okay. I helped my mother with canning and making kids pajamas and things like, wonderful things like that. In those days, you remember, we didn't have freezers and so mother would buy a bushel of green beans and we put them in the locker plant. You had to go to a locker plant and put your your vegetables in your little boxes and everything in the locker plant. You, so. And then you, when you needed them, you went to get them, right? You went to go get them. So. Wow, that's interesting. Uh huh. And you probably took the train back and forth, didn't you? I took the train and I... Uh, <clears throat> Later, I had a ride with a, man, a young, I don't know if he was a freshman or a sophomore, from Crown Point, Indiana. So I sometimes had a ride. Oh, that So out. that was good. That, That's it. He wanted to be paid before I got in the car. So, <laughs> so he'd have gas money. I guess, like. I guess. I yeah, guess. Right. Okay. But I took the train, too. Sure. Yeah. Okay. What was Chauncey Village like when you came? Do you recall? Well... The post office was where Vaughn's bookstore is, and um, was there a little grocery store there? And there was a there was a grocery store on Northwestern, right? That's what I've heard. Uh, that was Goldie's, and that was Goldie Mackey. Goldie Mackey is had it, the little grocery store. Is that right? Uh huh. Red Mackey's wife, uh, sister or, or sister or relative? Okay. Uh huh. Right. Were there any uh, in the bookstore? Was the bookstore there? Oh, Deke's bookstore, yes. That okay, was but not university bookstore. Because that, was that there? Uh, let me think. <clears throat> um, I don't know. University bookstore, something was on the, fall, we didn't have Follett's, but we had University and Deke's. And probably Foster Film was probably there. Foster Film. Sure. And the, was there a clothing, any uh, men's clothing store there? Or ladies? They, I think they're... Sure. And it I was, forget the name of them, but... Yeah. Interesting. Then but because you could shop downtown, you know. There were downtown more stores. Or nice there, stores downtown. More stores. More stores. It was downtown. a downtown, right. And I didn't have... I was on a close budget. I think I got $10 a month for my spending money. Okay. So I didn't need to buy anything. Yeah. And I shipped my laundry home, you know. In a laundry case. In a laundry case, right. yes. And my mother sent it back with little goodies in it, which were nice. <laughs> right. Apples or things like that. Good stuff, right? Oh, Nutritious. Yeah, good, oh, good things. Yes. <laughs> right. Oh, did you did you go to football games? Oh, yes. That was great fun. Yeah. Great fun. And basketball, too, I'm and sure. And basketball, too. I was on the bleachers when they went down. Uh-huh. Were no, you hurt? I was not hurt, but the girl sitting next to me was. Did you, the bleachers you were on did go down? Yes, or they no? went. We were about <clears throat> halfway up, I'd say. And when the 
so there was a little rocking motion, and I heard the vets, the men up above, say, lift up your legs, lift up your legs. And so the whole thing shifted and moved all the way down, and if you hadn't lifted up your legs, you'd have broken both legs because your knees and... Uh, and But the, the girl who was next to me, her back was broken because she was on the solid part of the, the bleacher, not the wooden part. And so that brace was hard enough that... So, wow. and we were right across the street. You see, they opened up the doors. We, we lived across the street at Cary Hall. Right. Did you did you just leave right afterwards, or how, well, did you we get... had to wait. We had to wait for Shirley because she couldn't. She hurt and had to wait all get that. Somebody. Everybody, and then it, you yeah, know, it was quite an incident. It was terrible. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, after so, at, then when you graduated, what came next? When I graduated, I uh, graduated in '50 with a teaching certificate, and I got a wonderful job at Speedway Junior High School in Speedway, Indiana. And I had an a excellent salary. For nine months, I got $2,900. That was a lot of money. Train. I, I took the train down there all by myself. And, you know, I'm a big girl now. I'm a mm -hmm. graduate. And, and I had... I, had a room in a boarding house. The woman had two bedrooms. Another woman was in the, the other bedroom. And we had a little little uh, cabinet where we could keep our food if we wanted. We could have breakfast there. That was all. So then we had to go to a little restaurant and go around <coughs> the corner to <coughs> eat your dinner where they had you know ham and beans on Friday or whatever. I don't know. That kind of thing. Yeah, and they took the bus, and they it was you know, Sixteenth Street went right into the town, but I made enough money that I could go to um, Peck and Peck, which was a lovely woman's store, and buy clothing and everything. And I uh, had a boyfriend, and he was in the uh, Marine Corps. And so I went to visit him. And Where was he stationed? He was he was at um, at Quantico or at Quantico. Okay, so you took the train. No, I flew. Oh, see, I I made enough money you could fly. Do you see what I mean? Big big stuff. <laughs> Boy, you're really moving up. Oh, man. moving up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how did you like your first year of teaching? I enjoyed it, but it was one of those things where. The, there were 40 students in a room that was much too small for them. They were 7th grade. It was English. Can you remember 7th grade English and, and spelling lists and all, the, all this sort of thing? They didn't like it very much. Mm. And I can't I, remember back then. And I was far. sort of backed into the wall, do you know what I mean? But we did fine. We, we did okay. We did okay. And there were nice teachers and nice head of the department and and I went to basketball games at Hinkle okay. Fieldhouse. And Good. Then what, what came next? Tell about your career before you came back to, to Purdue or to Lafayette. Did you stay there for a couple of years teaching? No, I stayed one year, and then um, uh, my uh, first husband was Lou Wood, and we were married in, in 19... Uh, 52, 52, 52, and we lived in in uh, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and then moved to Decatur, Illinois, where my eldest son was uh, born, and then moved to South Bend, where the other two children were born, and then we lived in New York City. And um, how long did you live in South Bend? A couple years. Four or? years. Oh, four okay. or five. Uh huh. Six. And uh, then we moved to New York and lived there four years. And so the children went to an Episcopal Day school, and and Jim was the youngest was in a stroller most of the time. You know, we walked everywhere. 
That was a great experience. You lived right in Manhattan? Yes. Oh, did you have an apartment? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, New York is... is, is, is love it. Yes, right. We, we lived on the Upper West Side and uh, on 106th Street and met a lot of wonderful people. And right. went to every play we could because we thought we would just be there one year. What was your husband doing? He was in broadcasting. Okay. Radio or TV? TV. TV. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. But uh, you had experienced a lot of, you go to the plays, did you go to the opera? We went to, we went oh. to an opera so that we, because we thought we ought to. You know, we went to Aida and had to read the book because we didn't know the story. That's the first one that I went to, and I knew the synopsis before I went there. And people told me you will, it's the you will love it, and I did, and I like Aida. Oh, I love the music. I love it. Yes. Oh, I still like it. You know. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, and it was the old opera house, you see. Oh yes. But yes. we took the children to everything. They went to plays and they the museums. All the museums. The... We we everybody came to visit us, so I knew all the. I'd have them loaded with all the things they could do, how they could get there on the subway and which bus to take and everything. You You're know. on your own, right? And the only I, was time I, went... I was a travel agent then, <laughs> do you see? The only reason I went, time I went, I lived there for some time too, and the only time I went to the Empire State Building is when somebody came to visit. That's right. <laughs> You've never been there? No. We'll call. Just, yeah, but just, I sent them. You know, I didn't have to go it's more to than find. once. <laughs> right. yeah. it's, you see that up there? You can't miss it. Just keep <laughs> walking towards it. <laughs> oh, but then your your, your paths brought you back to Lafayette, huh? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, in New Orleans, uh, we had a parting of the ways, and so I came with the children to Lafayette, and I have loved every minute of it. I, my I don't know whether you want me to tell all this, but... Whatever. You can cut what you do. It's okay. Um, my friend, I wrote to my friend um, Joe Rudolph and asked him, if what, was there any way I could... How, what would it take for me to get a teaching license in Indiana? And instead of writing to me, he called me and said, all you need to do is get a master's degree within five years. So you can start teaching it when you can. And then somebody else said it would be <clears throat> it would be smart if you live somewhere where you've lived before, but not with your husband. And then I had other friends and had an aunt and uncle here and very close friends, Bill and Lois Long, and they said, Oh, Katie, come to Lafayette. So I Came. It came to Lafayette. <clears throat> my um, my when I decided I would come down to look for a place to live, we were up at my parents up at Ogden Dunes, Indiana, and uh, so I stayed with my aunt and uncle, and I brought my daughter Carol with me. How old was she at the time? She was, she must well, she was fifth grade or fourth, fifth grade. Uh -huh. At any rate, I was here, and my aunt said, I have a friend who has a house for rent, and would you like to go see it? And I said, yes, I would. Well, it turned out to be at 410 South 9th Street. That's right next to Evelyn Ball, Evelyn and Cable Ball's house, and it belonged to the Balls. They had wanted her father to stay there, be there, and he didn't want to come. He didn't want to leave Elizabeth, New Jersey. So... At any rate, it was perfect. And so I moved in with my, there were actually four bedrooms in that cute little house. And um, so we all had a room and it was just perfect. Uh, at any rate, uh, while I was there that weekend looking at the, at the place to rent, uh, Lois and Bill Long said, well, there's a party this weekend out at out at the trails would you like to go and I said oh I'd love to go and Carol can stay with Aunt Janet and Uncle John and so I went out to the trails and I walked in and here were all these people that I knew and they say oh Katie what are you doing here and I said well I'm going to move to Lafayette oh wonderful wonderful and so it was you know all my all my friends the 
that you know that knew well, how nice you know the seekers and the people the, that you knew were there yeah all the people that I right. knew were there right. so I've always said moving here was like putting my hand in a glove and then the other thing was the school system we were in Lafayette because I felt that if these children were making an, a change in their lives they didn't need to be so competitive to live on the west side so I specifically wanted to be on that side and they uh, Bob went to uh, Tecumseh but Carol and Jim went to Highland School and they had to walk home go, come back for lunch and that sort of thing and the schools were my right hand because I needed to have somebody help me take care of them sure right um, and then that that uh, summer let's see we came in 1976 and uh, that summer late summer Joe Rudolph called me and said Katie would you like a job and I said yes doing what and I was ready to do something and it was to help Purdue go to the Rose Bowl so at any rate I went over to work part-time at, at the at the alumni office. At the alumni office, and I'd been there about three or four weeks, and the Conlon and Dodds were the tour, director, tour operators, and they said, oh, Katie, you've got to come to the West Coast with us. So I asked Mother and Dad if they could watch the children in the, at Christmas time when I was gone for a week or whatever it took. And I went out there, and I just loved it. it was, I had a very responsible jobs like holding a sign over my head that said, this way to the buses. I mean, I got... Really, and Keith, the key, Keith, Keith, well, we Keith, need those people. We need those signs with the people. <laughs> you probably you went by train, though, didn't you? No, we oh, flew. Oh, you we flew. flew, okay, okay. And uh, New Year's Eve, we had a party of the people who were there with the tour group. There were eight of us around a table and we had brought 8,000 people there. They were all happy in hotels and tickets ready to do the next thing the next day. And I thought, isn't this great? <laughs> Relishing, oh, I'm, ah. So at any rate, when, they t when the t we got the last bus loaded and everything back, back to the airport and all that, and Joe Rudolph said, well, you know, from time to time, Jack Irwin is looking for somebody to work at the travel agency, would you like me to call him? I said, oh, I'd love it. He said, because I don't have any part-time jobs available. So I, the following week, I went in to talk to Jack Irvin on a Thursday, and I went to work on Monday and stayed for 11 years. And enjoyed it. Loved it. it. Right, yeah, and they expect for the researchers, it was located on Northwestern in the village. I just one twenty-seven Northwestern. Right, yeah, and then they build on to it. And you took some trips along with it, probably, huh? Oh yes. Oh, that well, we need a tour guide, who is it? and an arranger at the same time. Understand? Right, right. right. Okay. So yes, the first when I first started, I didn't have a desk. I just had the pull-out thing on an on extension on a secretary's desk. And I stamped file folders with Urban Travel with a stamp. So that's how I started. We start I ended up I ended up leading tours and <laughs> and you know, I've been to lots of countries good in the world. Right. Let's um, move on and talk a little about the class of nineteen fifty in the lecture hall. How you got involved a little bit, whatever you want <laughs> to share. Was it a, a, a preliminary committee or uh, <clears throat> whatever you'd like to share with us? Well, you're on a committee, a committee member. <clears throat> I think it, uh, my first knowledge of the class of 1950 uh, project, <clears throat> it was either in 1978 or 79 <clears throat> that I said I would work on a um, committee that for the homecoming for the 30th anniversary of the class. And so I went to this meeting, and it was held at Jim and Rosemary Blakesley's house. 
on Waldron Street. And I came home that evening and said to my husband, Dale McMillan, that, um, that do you know what those old guys are going to do? They say they're going to build a building. It was the first I'd heard of it. Well, Jim Blakesley knew that that's what we needed on the campus. There needed to be a large lecture hall that had up-to-date uh, tables and facilities, er everything that, that right. was needed. Right. So that's how it started. <clears throat> and I was just the one who, you know, I said we had so many committee meetings. We met at the Sagamore Room back of the the Sagamore Room at the Memorial Union Building at at the to have lunch, and I think we met every week for I don't know forever it seemed like, and our room that we we had a special room that was back across the other hall the the West Hall we'll say, at any rate, um, but it was a great committee and I I'd forget names if I that's okay you know. Did, uh, did you enlarge the committee? You had a working group and then people would be can uh, canvassed because you had a large, pretty large class. We had a large class, well, but it was the, the, planning, the planning committee right. are the ones that came up. We had, had to find who would be the head of the fundraising, sure. who did this, who did that. And then we divided up into regions and we had region and individuals and... Right. All, all of that. The alumni office would have been some help with names and things. Oh we? yes, of course. And right. we we he, had, needed that. We we had all we had that, and we had. Um, did you Harold Michael? who was wonderful. Uh, did you have an idea where the building would actually be located? Was that part of the planning process? No, the the university we had we needed to work with the university on that. Um, should I tell? Should I tell about what what we what? Um, That's up to Dr. you. Dr. Beering said about it at the at the meeting at the at the, party. the plaque yeah the plaque de dedication sure I thought that was nice. Well, <clears throat> so here was Maury Williamson, the jokester and everything, and and the farmer and loved being a farmer and all that and ag alumni and so on and we said that it was his job to go see President Beering and see what could be done if we build a building, could we name it the class of 1950 lecture hall? Because we, if it was, if we thought we could raise a million dollars. So here went Maury Williamson, the jokester, who got, went to the office and he said it was the longest 20 feet that he'd ever seen up to Dr. Beering's desk. At any rate, so then he explained what he, what we wanted. Would that be possible? And as President Bering said at the 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 ceremony we had this past year, he said, "Now, if you're the president of a university and someone comes to you and said, if we raise a million dollars, would you name this building for the class of 1950?" And what would you say? You'd say, yes, what can we do to help you? So you see, that's, that's what it took. And it took President Beering being willing and helpful and, and all. So that, and foresight enough to see it. Right. And know that we were going to do it. The other thing was that we needed to do it for our 40th anniversary, not our 50th because these men were seven or eight years older than... You had, the, because you had, uh, for the research, you had people for the from veterans, the veterans that were in there. The veterans were older. Sure, and, right, exactly. So that's what we had, what we planned for. So right. at any rate, that's how we got it. Then we raised enough money, more than the million dollars. So Bill Creason, who was the head of the fundraising, who was a marvelous man, I'm sorry, but he's gone now. At any rate, um, uh, said, well, why don't we do a sculpture? Chase Seward Johnson does wonderful things. So that's when we got started on doing the sculpture. Right, yeah. And it's called The Way We Were. At any rate, so 
then we decided that it was it had to be somebody with the chords on the with the the chords the for way the they, the they way were they, dressed right and the slide rule and the and the the leather jacket all leather jacket from the veteran days and uh, books that had to do with the thing and the girl should have a sweater on and pearls and she had bobby socks on and and um, so at any rate well I said could I um, everybody was getting dibs on doing the the bracelet the ID bracelet or the book or something and I said well can I have a sorority pin on her no you can't have a sorority pin on her and because that wouldn't be fair you know everybody would. so then I said well can I have my sorority ring on her so my sorority ring is on her hand and it's on the back of the up of the bench oh. so I think that is a big deal for me it is <laughs> that's good <laughs> anyhow that was fun yeah uh, uh, anyhow the sculpture really is nice the whole building is just is uh -huh. wonderful are you aware that there's another bench in there on the other side and it's, maybe somebody told me that but I don't and the bench says the way we are in other words it's empty and when you sit the students sit there. That's our, I get, oh, okay. The way we are today. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh sounds logical to me. That sounds right. good. And then you had, well, what, um, the final announcement, you had a dedication, didn't you? I think the dedication was uh, of the, of of the, the building. The, right. On yeah. October the 20th in 1990. And you had a, a, a dinner. Or, or right. A, we okay. did. Most of, and you had a good turnout? We had a wonderful turnout. We had... Well, Bill Creason thought we ought to really make it good, and he said, I think I'll swing for uh, the Tommy Dor Dorsey Orchestra. So that's what he did. We had the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra. We, You know, I got to do the thing. I had a, a little, um, the uh, archway that where you'd have your picture taken with your sure, date sure, and sure, all right. that kind of stuff. And all kinds of stuff. Super. And we had, we just had lots of fun. That's very nice. It was gorgeous, and we had. Let me ask you one further thing on the location. Did did you work? Did your committee work with the university on suggested sites, or how did that come out? I thought researchers might. How was this particular spot chosen? Well, that hall needed to be replaced. I think it I don't think it replaced Pierce was, Hall, which was an older one for the researchers. Old, yeah, it was right. older, and it had a. Uh, it had a classroom that had uh, rows of seats and so on. I bet it uh, might have seat 200 or something like a that. A large, what they call large lecture room. Right. right? Sure. And, but this was an old, old building and creaky and everything. So that's what we worked on. And, and we didn't have enough money to do an elevator in the building, you know, which would have been nice, but you actually enter the building from up above and you exit on the, on the door. On the right. That works out. That's easy for works people. Works out. Sure. Good. Okay. Um, let's see. About uh, your, uh, community activities. You got any special activities that you've been involved in? I, yes, I, I have. Okay. Uh, I was, uh, my son Bob graduated from Jefferson High School. And I saw that uh, at the graduation that Ann Glade was the president of the school board and there were all men there. And I thought to myself, I can do that. And so in 1976, I was on the Lafayette School Board and they, uh, the men elected me president. Isn't that nice? Yes. So I went through a lot of things, including a strike, a teacher strike. And um, all of those men that I know and knew and that are still here, I love them all. And I have their respect, and that's what I have great pride in. Right, and you should. It's well-deserved. At any rate. And then I married Dale McMillan, and... Um, 
I was I he said you can work if you want to and you don't have to work if you don't want to and so I work for a while and finally I thought well maybe I don't want to work for a while <laughs> so I uh, somebody said you would enjoy friends of downtown so I went to a meeting and I signed up and paid my ten dollars or whatever it was and pretty soon uh, the um, the woman who was in charge of the festivities of the uh, for um, railroad relocation, Liz Solberg, uh, was at this meeting, and she said, "What well, we're trying to come up with ideas for the very first thing that we're going to do at for railroad relocation." And so we came up with ideas about having a train there and the flat platform being the the where the lectern would be and that sort of thing and I I knew where a, a calliope was and I said why don't we d d decorate the depot with the you know red white and blue and the swags and sure. so on and I've always said that I I came up with those some of those oh and we needed balloons and we needed something to eat and we needed music so you've got to have something all everything covered uh, at any rate, I said I've always said that Paula Woods. I held the ladder, and Paula Woods put the bunting up on. The <laughs> it's okay. So it's okay. It's all right. At any rate, so then I forget the next thing was we were opening the thing for the underpass at on Wabash Avenue, and so I said, well, let's get the Jeff Band and our, you know, sure and do so-and-so and anyhow and we did that and you have to have food and music and and you have to have giveaways you know and so we did that and the next thing Liz called me and said would I have lunch with her and I said yes and she said I'm going to be the new head of, of railroad relocation the new director and would you come would, could you work part-time for us and do all the things you've been doing about the planning, the special projects, and so on, and we'll pay you? And I said, oh, I think that sounds good. <laughs> Sign me up. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so that's, that's how did. I got started. Okay. And I not only did the ribbon cuttings and all that sort of thing, but I also had to go... Um, around and tell people now there'll be no parking for the next two years on this side of the block you know so I knew all of them I had to tell the vendors at farmers market it will be out in the parking lot for the next three years and all that so I got the bitter and the sweet but I, kn I knew everybody I knew I knew the man at the at the street department who sure. could do the flags and I waved to truck drivers and you know, so I know them You're all. You're Miss, Miss Lafayette. <laughs> well, I knew I I knew them. <laughs> right. Anyhow, it was fun. Yeah, that sounds good. That's good activities. How about uh, Purdue tradition? Is there one that comes to mind? Well, you? athletics or well, I would love to go to more games, but I don't. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, you've gone to them. All but the I've time. been I've sure. I've done a lot of those things. Right. Um, I don't know. I think that I'm a, I am an American as gets me every time. Right, as it does others. It's good. How about an outstanding event? Anything come to mind? Doesn't necessarily have to be Purdue related. Could be anything. Hmm. Could have more than one. In my whole life, <laughs> maybe I've had it. wonderful travel experiences. I am good. very fortunate that I not only could take uh, travel agent trips where I can travel further with less cost, but even uh, my husband, Dale, and I were able to go on some agricultural trips. So I've been to lots of places, not to China and India, but I've been to, right. and I've led tours, alumni tours, and took the Glee Club once to Europe and sounds good enriches your life and that's wonderful it is it's nice and I think I've imbued that 
love of travel to my children and others. Did your children, uh, any of them come to Purdue? Yes. Okay. My eldest is a musician, okay. professional musician, and he went to Butler and he's in the Indianapolis Symphony. What instrument does he play? He's second chair trumpet and Good. has been there 17 years. Um, my daughter Carol is lives outside of Detroit in Gross Point and teaches at Ypsilanti, which is Eastern Michigan. She's a tenured professor in speech aud speech pathology, and so she I'm proud of her. My Did son, she go to Purdue? She graduated from Purdue, uh -huh. got her master's at the University of Guy's Hospital, University of London, and her PhD at Michigan State. My son Jim graduated from Purdue, and he uh, was an engineer at, in the medical field in the early stages of catheters and that sort of thing, and unfortunately died of a massive heart attack at age 40 with a son who was one month old. So that's been a long time, and Matthew is now 12, and he's going to be here this summer. We're having a family reunion, and he will not know his mother and his sister will That's nice. be, be here. Yeah. So where do they live? They live in Los Altos, California. Okay, good. Well, that's very nice. Isn't that you. good? That's great. Um, in closing, anything that I forgot to ask or anything that you would uh, like to say? Well, I'm very proud of Purdue, and I'm. it's part of my heritage. Good. Okay. So, you and John Purdue. <laughs> yes, John. There you Rudy. go. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Katie. Thank you.